here today to talk to you about something you do not want to hear about. Something I wish to God I was not here talking about. Something I thought that myself and my family were completely safe from. Last April, my son Cody killed himself. He was just finishing his second year at University of Florida in mechanical engineering, getting ready to come home for summer break, telling all his friends how excited he was. No one ever suspected that he was secretly traumatized, except for his roommates and maybe the Gainesville police. I'm sharing this part of my life with you because I cannot save my son. It has taken me several months to realize that no matter how angry I get or how hard I try, he is not coming home. The most I can do now is to be there for my daughter and to maybe help others realize that troubles are not always evident. Let me tell you a little bit about Cody. First off, he loved going to UF and being on his own. He was always so independent and strong-minded, even as a young child. His strength and academics received him a full high school scholarship to American Heritage High School, a bright future scholarship to UF, and a national merit finalist. His sense of humor was always witty and sarcastic, never taking life seriously. We were all so proud of him. I always believed that he would make the right choices for himself. Well, being human, Cody made a mistake, one that he felt he couldn't live with. Now I'm going to let him tell you about it in his final letter. And I've asked his best friend, lifetime friend, Nick Aslanli to read. I will follow with my response letter. My hope in sharing my family's personal tragedy is to try to spare another family this heartbreak. To mom, dad, and Hannah, I have no idea how to put into words all the things I want to say to you. I love you more than I could ever hope to express, even if I was never very good at showing it. Even if my actions now seem to suggest the opposite. If I had known two weeks ago that I would be doing this, I would have driven home and never left. On April 11th, DEA agents searched my apartment on suspicions that my roommate was selling drugs. Like the short-sighted idiot I am, I was making hallucinogens known as mushrooms and DMT. These are safe to the body and completely non-physically addicting, but they're Schedule 1 drugs, meaning their manufacturer is considered a greater offense than crystal meth or crack. Yeah, makes no sense to me either. Among other things, I am soon to be charged with at least four felonies, two of them being drug manufacturing and trafficking. Basically, life-changing consequences that I am not capable of dealing with. I never made these to sell, just for my own enjoyment. I know this is pointless information, but wanted you to know that this is not something you could or should have seen coming. Two weeks ago, I was very, very happy with my life, and suicide was literally the last thing on my mind. Mom and Dad, I love you so much, and I could not have asked for better parents. You gave me a special and beautiful life, and were there for me through all my ups and downs. I was given a perfect life and opportunity by you, but I played a selfish gamble with my future and lost big time. There should be no guilt or what ifs in your heart, as you should know that nothing you could have done would have made me a better person. I am the failure in this case. I believed I would never be caught from my own actions, and I was wrong. I failed to see that the most important part of life is family, and my greatest regret other than what I am doing to you and our family, is that I did not spend more time with you and Hannah in recent years. You deserved a better son, and I wish I could have been that son. Hannah, this is hard for me to write, especially knowing the pain I'm about to cause you and mom and dad. I messed up big in a big way, and I'm taking the selfish way out. I love you so much, Hannah, and I'm sorry I won't be able to be there for you as you go through life. You are growing into a beautiful young woman. I know. I checked your Facebook. And I cannot express how sorry I am to be leaving you. Especially like this. I was not the big brother I wish I could have been for you. And that is my greatest regret. You, Mom, and Dad do not deserve what I am doing to you. I am a horrible role model, but I know you will continue to be a beautiful person and live an outstanding life. I just wish I could be there for you. I will not try to justify my actions both the drugs and the suicide. Though I strongly disagree with the laws regarding the two main substances I was caught with, a law is a law. 
I played with fire and I got burnt. I was unintentionally gambling away my future, my happiness, and my life all in the name of stupid fun. I'm beyond sorry for my actions, mom and dad. You raised a better, better son than what I've done, and I have no explanation for that. I wish I did. Not, I wish I did. I wish I had a horrible family so that I could do this without more remorse. But I don't. I have a loving family that is perfect in every sense of the word. And now I'm throwing that away and ruining your lives for further selfish reasons. I wish I was a better person, a better man, a better son, and a better brother. But I'm not. I'm just some selfish idiot causing big problems in your lives by escaping my own. But know that I will always, that I always have, and always will, love you, Cody. Dear Cody, I want you to know that I forgive you for taking your precious life away from us. I understand that you are in such a dark place that you could not find your way out. If only you would have reached out to us. Did you not realize how deep our love was for you? That we would have spared no effort or cost to see you safely through this storm. I would give anything to have you back. I'm sure you suffered tremendously, but now your family and friends are suffering and will continue to suffer because you are not here with us. You found yourself under a dark, ominous cloud. But how many times have we put up those damn storm shutters on our 12-foot windows only to have the storm be so mild that you and your sister played in the wind. Sometimes fear is worse than reality. I know that you would have made it. We would have rallied as a family and dealt with your problem and been stronger for it. Wiser too. Maybe we would even someday laugh about the college days and worry about your children as they headed off into the world. Your storm would have passed, Cody, and the sun would have risen for you again. But for now, you'll remain forever in my heart. Mom. Hello, my name is Jackie Rosen and I'm the Executive Director CEO of the Florida Initiative for Suicide Prevention, or FISP. What you, you have just heard is one of just many stories that take place in the U.S. at a rate of 35,000 that die by suicide and up to 875,000 attempts each year in the U.S. Suicide is the 11th leading cause of death in our country. Each and every 15.2 minutes there is a death by suicide and an attempt every 38 seconds. Suicide is the third highest killer of 14 to 24 year olds and the second highest killer of college students. The most prevalent cause of suicide is depression and as a family member, friend, co-worker or schoolmate you need to know that the signs of suicide. Don't ignore the signs. Reach out. Help. Go to FISP website and learn all about the signs and how the many things that we have and resources and what FISP really does to help. You can make a huge difference in a lot of lives when you help save a single life. You may even change the world.